Hello, everyone, and good morning. Thank you so much for tuning into the show. And I'm here to tell you that if you enjoy the show in any capacity at all, maybe I'm funny, maybe I have good guests, maybe, uh, I don't know, sometimes I'm interesting, whatever. If there's anything that you like about this show, please hit that follow button, that subscribe button, wherever you're listening. If you're on YouTube, make sure you like the videos, you subscribe to the channel, you comment, and you share. I am tired of working menial jobs and would love to speed up the process of making some money on this goddamn thing. So please like, comment, subscribe, share, tell everyone about us wherever you listen to the show. Follow it. it makes a huge difference. Thank you guys. Enjoy the episode. Yeah, so I was at the... Yeah, just pull a little closer. You're good. All right. Tanner, first of all, thank you for coming on. Thank you, Antonio. <laughs> Glad to be here. Glad yeah. to be here. It's exciting. Just as I say I don't do an intro, we'll do an intro. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I've done this before. Right. Yeah, so uh, at the store, at the, the I went to Shaw's before this, and okay. some guy that was like, I don't know, stocking some bullshit, he was like, whoa, I like your shirt. And I was like, yeah, uh, fucking... He didn't, it was kind of the same thing. He's like, I didn't realize that it said that at the top, but then he started laughing. And I'm like, yeah, he'd probably say that if he was here now. <laughs> he probably would. Yeah. He probably would. Stay strapped, get clapped. Yeah. Or get clapped, excuse me. Or get it. clapped, right? Yeah, true that. You don't want to misquote him. No. <laughs> no. No, no, I don't. Um, but yeah, man, glad to be back on the show. Yeah, totally. Uh, it's been... Yeah, so actually right after the last show, uh, I had COVID. So Damn. That was literally like right after. I don't know. Right. I texted you and like everything. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. I remember that now. That was yeah. what you say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that was interesting. But uh, life's been good since, you know, just like right. getting stuff done, trying to grow. That was that was probably right before everything went to shit, right? When the gym had to close and all that. Or was it? No, 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 no. Not that long ago. That was... Okay. Um, so... That was, uh, so it's been eight months now. Okay, okay. Nine months, maybe, since we chatted. Gotcha. So that was like, the gym had just reopened after being closed for like two or three weeks when the state oh, made us close okay. down and gotcha. like near Christmas last year. Right, Remember right, right, that? right, right, right. Um, where they shut down all like the gyms essentially, but nothing else. It was really... <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make sense, it right? It makes zero sense. <laughs> you have 300 people in a target, but yeah, people ex- trying to get healthy in a big space. Yeah, don't, like, do no, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't get better. Don't get better. Keep, stay where you are. Right. You know? um, but yeah, so it had just opened up. And since then, uh, things are going great, man. Um, we're back to about like 85, 90% of where the gym used to be. Okay. So getting getting back to that and just like continuing on, on growing. And right. And it's been kind of nice. It's created like a nice little like core culture. Um, like, you know, a lot of, you know, not a lot, but some people left. But those that like stayed, you know, like, you know, when you go through like hard stuff together, it makes sure. you like closer and stuff like that. Sure. So it's definitely like really cool seeing the community like grow again. Right. And like seeing all these people kind of like come out of their shells and like become friends and like all this stuff. And it's like really good. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. No, it's... um. As shitty as all the stuff that happened was, Mm -hmm. um, and to say things like, oh, the gym is back almost to where it was before, Yeah, it's promising because now it can get past that point. Yes. It can get... And now you have, like you just mentioned, those people that stayed and they get to be a part of it and see the next phase. Yes. And how big it can actually grow to. Exactly. Exactly. Which is great. Yeah, man. It's... uh, (laughs) I've been like pretty into like stoicism lately. Okay. You know, like challenges the way type of stuff. Like yes. no such thing as a good or a bad situation, just like a situation and like what you make of it. Sure. Could make it like good or bad. Yeah. Um, and it's like, yeah, like it sucked, but like I learned a lot, you know, during it. Like I've been able to take like more personal time and like not work as hard, but like work smarter. Right. Um, and then yeah, and like be more true to myself. Well, like, um, so just like be more honest in general. Okay. Right, like be more honest with like what you look for or what you're expecting from people, mm-hmm. um, just like communicating essentially. And uh, when you do that, then other people around you like feel that and they want to be a part of it, right? Because like no one likes liars, like, right. <laughs> <laughs> for the most part. Yeah, right? for the most part, hopefully. Yeah. Um, Except for like law enforcement, they find a. They make some money when they find some liars. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> Um, but I don't know if I would say they necessarily like them. They just maybe get enjoyment out of what happens because of. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, but, uh, 
yeah, so it's just been cool watching like it grow when you know, like when you're more true to yourself, then like other people around you are more true to themselves. That attracts people that are similar. Right. So then like everything starts growing more like cohesively versus like not growing. Right. Well, <clears throat> I'm happy you brought up the. Um... Uh, you said uh, communicating. Yes. Which is something that I think we should... Because there's so many different ways to do it. Yeah. There's speaking, there's writing, there's body language, there's yeah. actions. There's a thousand different ways to communicate. Yeah. Um, and I feel that we should be proficient at all of them. Yeah. Because when it comes to... We're not writing letters anymore, but mm -hmm. we are texting people. Yes. And sometimes that shit comes through... Not exactly how you wanted it to, <laughs> yeah. or people take it the wrong way, and yeah. and it's crazy context. I don't know if you um, have you gotten a chance to see the the new Chappelle special? No, I haven't yet. Holy fuck! Dude. Is it good? Oh my god, it's oh, insane. Man. You know what I've been in is Ted Lasso. Have you watched that yet? I have not. Oh my god. All right, you go first though, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave Chappelle is. I mean, this special. It's his last, his last one with Netflix. Netflix. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, um, he goes like all out, completely all out. We love that. Right. And he, and he talks about how, um, he's like, I have a purpose tonight. I want to renegotiate. Uh, I want to take back the baby because you know, his controversy. I don't know if you've heard, um, the rapper, the baby. Yeah, yeah. He said some, uh, AIDS -y stuff at a big festival and now he's become the complete enemy of the LGBTQ community. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is now ringing a bell. I remember seeing stuff about that with the baby. Right. Yeah. Did so, not put some bop in it. No, he did not. <laughs> he did not. not. Not this time. No. They fucking bopped him. If anything. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, so he goes up and, and he talks about, you know, the contrast between, like, uh, you know, the BLM movement uh, you know, fighting racism, that type of thing. Uh -huh. And then how there's a whole other movement that's not recognizing the human condition, not recognizing the, the experience that the other side's having. Got it. Being the, you know, the LGBT community, you know, the alphabet people yeah. fighting, <laughs> fighting <laughs> yeah. against the baby. It's, uh, and that's like the basis of his whole thing. Because also, if you've seen his other specials, he kind of has a problem, not a problem, but they have a problem with him transgender community as well so he okay. uh, he accounts for that and he talks all about that and how he had a phenomenal friend one of the best people he's ever known was transgender Got so it. he goes into like a, and it's a whole thing if you really think about it, it's breaking down communicating yeah and he's a comedian his job is to be fucking a critic of everything his job is to make fun of everything all the time yes so yes. like the idea that he can do his job without hurting some people's feelings is like essentially impossible exactly well but yes, essentially. It's hard. It's yeah. fucking hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, depending, and this is like very challenging thing to talk about because like it, I, it depends on what degree. Sure. Right? But like some of it is like how a person takes it, right? Like there is such a thing as joking, right? And that's okay, yeah. right? And how someone else takes it sometimes is on them. Yes. But then there are also lines that sometimes shouldn't be crossed. I have no idea what any of those are, right? <laughs> which is why I'm not a comedian. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but communicating around those has to be like so challenging. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. But right. but so during this special, he he like he he of course leans into everything. He leans into the you know yeah. the community. He fucks on everybody and everybody. Thing. Yeah, and uh, which I would argue like isn't being any sort of racist or sexist or oh, any ist, right? Yeah. Like if you're making fun of everyone, if, like no one's off limits, including yourself, yeah. then like, it's, I would say it's just, fair. it's just equal hate. Yeah. If, if you want to look at it in that way. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, but no, I mean, he breaks it down in a way that it's like these, you know, these are jokes. We're all supposed to be laughing together. You shouldn't be taking away somebody's livelihood. Yes. The way that he ends the, the show is he's like, taking away a man's livelihood is, this, is akin to killing him. Yeah. Which, I mean, is a pretty powerful fucking thing to say. 
but it's also true. Like, yes. this is the way that the baby makes money. This is the way that this rapper makes money. He's an outlandish guy. He shot and killed a guy in Walmart. <laughs> what? Like, I have never heard this story. And exactly. This is so a great conversation. I'm excited right now. I've never heard any of these things. I'm learning so much about the baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's how he starts the thing. His his first joke, essentially, about this whole topic is he's like, I don't think they know how. Like, I don't know if the LGBT community knows his background. He's kind of a wild guy. He shot and killed a guy in Walmart. And yeah. he looks around and he goes, nothing bad happened in his career. And then he says some fucked up shit on stage, which he acknowledged was fucked up. Yeah. He's like, he hit him right in the AIDS. He's like, I, he's like, I don't, I, I, I go hard in the paint, but I heard that. And I was like, damn, the baby, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but he's like, uh, he's like, now one, you know, a group of gay people get upset Mm-hmm. Now you can't make money ever again. Now you're taking off the charts. You're taking off the features. Yeah. It's kind of fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Well, so you're talking like cancel culture type of uh, stuff. Yes. Yes, yeah. yes. Or he was talking cancel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it is. It's um, it's a very interesting time. And I think it goes back to communication. I think there's this great thing where people have started to discover how important words are. Yes. And like how powerful they can be and, and what they can do. Uh but then there's this other side where people have found out how powerful words are yes. <laughs> and they have become hypercrit. Excuse me. I don't know if it's hypercritical. They at least become critical of potentially hypercritical right. of what people say. Uh, and like, yeah, you know, I, from what you're saying, the baby sounds like he fessed up. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like I messed up. I didn't mean to say it like that or say that or whatever it may be. Um, and especially being a celebrity, like, or being anyone who's like a leader in any sort of way, like you're held to this higher standard sure. than anyone else, right? Like he said that with a group of friends, you know, like as an example, they may have just been like, hey man, like you shouldn't say it like that. Like mm. just so you know, like it could have been a complete mistake. Um, I have no idea what he said, by the way. So <laughs> exactly. There's some bad stuff. Okay. But like, again, he's, a, a, what is he? Probably not even 30. Yeah. He's a Multi, multi-millionaire. He's the biggest rap artist in the world. He's in a concert. He's at the biggest uh, hip-hop festival in the country, Rolling Loud, in yeah. Miami at their biggest show. He's probably hyped up. He's probably running around saying crazy shit, not to mention what he says in his songs. Yeah, or what he's also consumed. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. like, he's talking about killing and robbing and, you know, infertility and shit, and you guys are like, yeah, but he comes on stage and says some, you know, racy shit. It's like, you, you got to pick, you know, how yeah. bad is bad, you know? Yeah. Like... And that's the thing is it's yeah. like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it's tough to be in, in it's, I'm sure it's always been tough to be in a spotlight as a, as a famous person. Yeah. But now it's like way harder. Yeah. It's gotta be. It's way harder. Um, and yeah, like again, just like any sort of leadership role, any sort of thing where, um, you may be famous or you just get a lot of attention or you may be in some sort of spotlight, like you're in that light. Yeah. And People, I'd say, expect a, at least a good bit from you on that end. Probably a lot. Yeah. And like when you make a mistake, that essentially gets amplified. Um, you know, like think about how many people you know that like have gotten like a DUI or like whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, not a good thing, right? But like, and it sucks. I'm sure I've gotten one when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But like. It's not on the news. Like, no one knows about it. Sure. Someone famous gets a DUI, and it's, like, on, like, three newspapers. Right. It's on, like, the local news for no reason. Like, mm-hmm. no one cares. Yeah. But, but people care, and they eat that shit up. Right. Um, so they get held to this, like, higher standard, and it's, like, you're going to make mistakes. It's a part of life. Not to mention the access we have. To, oh, yeah. I mean, and the abundance of famous people. Yeah. Like one day, you know, I, I love the baby. The next day I hate him. Here's some other guy that I can listen to. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, I think between like mass media and like social media, music media, anything like you can, you can essentially find someone to replace every day, every day. <laughs> like I, uh, I'm an, I'm a nerd. I play video games, you sure. know? So like I play a lot of call of duty There we go. and there was like the streamer I was watching for a while and he started playing apex. Yeah. 
So I stopped watching him and started watching another. Exactly. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> so easy. <laughs> Done. Yeah. Took me two seconds. Were you not a fan of Apex? So not just not I've a fan of watching it. I just haven't played it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I have never played it. Um, I was I watched some Call of Duty streamer stuff once in a while just to try to get better. Right, 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 right. Um, it's fun. Me and a couple of my boys play pretty often, so it's nice when we're good and winning. It's fun to win. <laughs> exactly. I know. Sometimes you can't. The worst, the most annoying thing to me because none of my friends play anymore. Yeah. But the most annoying thing to me is when you like because I really only play Warzone. Yep, that's what I play. Yeah. So. You come in and say it's like quads, yeah, and it doesn't fill your team, and you yeah. have like two people, yeah. And you're like, this is just stupid. I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> like, I'm yeah. not even gonna bother. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. That's why I got like a couple boys that I play with, and we're like, we're we're pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we you know try to get like win a day roughly. You know, like we we get after it, and um, it's just nice to. I don't know. I think if you're on any sort of, you know, team, so whether I'm playing video games with my buddies and we're like getting after it or a sports team or anything like that, sure. like it's nice to contribute. It's also, um, it's also something that a lot of people use as like, I guess, unwinding time. Yeah. Because some people look at video games, we'll say, we'll use video games as an example, as like just a complete waste of time. You're fucking off. You're, yeah. you know frying your brain yep. a boomer will say that <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah because when you realize that you can actually get some pretty good brain uh yeah it works out your brain more or less you know what I'm yeah it definitely can uh i think there's like a you know with everything there's a balance right like yeah. there's definitely playing too much video games totally which i definitely do which sometimes. happens yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> definitely like smoke some weed and play too much video games yeah. sometimes um but yeah no i think i mean it's no it's no better or worse than watching tv sure like, should I probably be reading a book? Yeah, probably. Or right. Like learning something. But, like, also, sometimes I just want to chill. Exactly. And if that's how I want to spend my time chilling, like, not doing any harm to anybody. Right. So, like, who who is to judge? Right, right, right. You know? Yeah, I, uh, I just hooked it back up because for a while, I recognized that I was like, all right, this is excessive. Yeah. It was like, I was getting to a point where it was like a part of my day. Like, it was like, all right, wake up, eat breakfast, uh, do a podcast thing. Play video games for like three hours. Yes. Go to the car, smoke a bowl, come back out, eat, forget that you just play video games for three hours and go back to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I think there's definitely, you know, uh, video games uh, can be like at least, they can be addicting. Oh, 100%. You know, uh, you 100%. get more gratification, right? Like you get things faster in a video game than you do in real life. Yeah. Right, like you get, you know, whatever it may be, the new gun, a win, more kills, better, whatever. Mm -hmm. You can essentially do it faster in a video game than you can in real life. So sure. it becomes more gratifying. Um, and then sometimes life is stressful. The video game is more fun than life yeah. sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes that, and so like, I mean, I played video games my whole life. And like when I've played them the most, those are the things that like I've noticed where I'm like, man, like... A, I'm like definitely falling into this trap of just like getting comfortable yeah. and like being able to sit here and, and it's fun, you know, and it's like great to vent. Uh, but it's also, I'm like, I'm kind of avoiding a few things. Yes. You know, like I'm getting like the basics done, you know, exactly. I'm going to the gym, I'm, you know, I'm getting my work done, but like the extra, Yes. you know, and especially like as a business owner, like that extra is a lot is the sauce yeah. it's yeah. like it's it you know what i mean yeah. like if there's anything i've learned from like owning a gym soon to be opening a second one potentially buying a third one oh, which we'll talk about shit. in a minute <laughs> wow <But> yeah um <laughs> i uh like through owning it like i've realized that like it's all about the details right like the nuance the nuance you know yeah. like the cleanliness of a gym like how a class runs throughout the day like every class should you know, feel the same essentially, you right. know, every, you know, every coach is different, should have their own personality, but right. like, you know, like all that stuff, like being streamlined, making it easy for the member, making them feel welcome, you know, making, I mean, everyone likes a clean gym. Right. And some people like dirty gyms, which is fine, but like not everyone does. <laughs> most, for the most part, people like a clean place to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so it's like, it's those details, um, details and communication. Yeah. Right? Uh, like those details are like what, what matter like that's the sauce so sure. well i don't know if you're uh, if you're a fan of um 
like those re- business rescue shows, like uh, Bar Rescue and Kitchen Nightmares. And oh, uh, I've seen some thing. of them, but I haven't seen it in a while. I actually was watching your thing a little bit earlier. Yeah, yeah I was talking about it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, they, uh, that's the thing in the whole show. It's like these people, they've been running a business the certain way. Yep. And then <laughs> as soon as Gordon Ramsay walks in, yeah, he can already tell. He's like... This wallpaper's been here for how long? Like, there's dust over there. Like, yeah. He could tell off rip. Yes. And, and that's, that's true. The, the people who are running it are probably like, no, it's bull- this guy's fancy. And yep. That's bullshit. But it's as real as fucking anything. It is, it yeah. is very real. And is now making me want to go back to my gym and clean. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Soon. Uh, yeah. Well, um, I'm opening another gym. Yes. And so a lot of equipment is just, like, strewn about. Because uh, I haven't been able to op- put it in the new facility. Okay. So, like, it's kind of a cl- clusterfuck at the gym right now. Right. So now that's making me more anxious about <laughs> it. But uh, but uh, for what you're saying, yeah, like, he comes in, he sees all this stuff. He's like, this, this, this. And he's, it's so obvious, right? Yeah. But the person that's, like, been in it for so long, they don't, like, see those details and don't understand how much they matter. Exactly. And uh, it's, it's that. It's, it's caring. Right. It is. And realizing what effect aesthetics have. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's actually like a big thing I've been thinking about the past couple of days is like, you can tell when someone cares or not. Sure. Right? Like results can be directly related to caring. Mm. Right? Like how someone does their job, how hard someone works in the gym, how hard someone works in a relationship, um, whatever, how hard someone works on themselves. Like it all comes down to them caring. You know, like people to me come to me all the time. They're like, man, you're so good at remembering names. Right. I mean, first of all, it's kind of my job. Yeah. You know, like, but it's also because like I care. You try to. I try to. Yeah. And if I don't remember it, I'll go up to someone and be like, I don't remember your name. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And it's so embarrassing. Like you never, you'll never do it again. And if you do, then just like, fuck you. You don't care. Sure. (laughs) I've realized that about myself recently. I'm like, dude, I immediately forget people's fucking names. (laughs) Like if I just met you, you'd be like, hey, I'm Tanner. I'm like, oh, I'm Antonio. Nice to meet you. Yeah. I'd turn around. I'd be like, who the fuck was that guy? (laughs) Yeah. I'm so bad. Yeah. Because, and like the excuse I use is like, I remember your face. Yeah. I'll always remember your face, which is kind of true. Which isn't a bad thing. Yeah. There has been times where I've remembered things about people, but not their name. Right. Like, oh, I remember you, da 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 da, or I remember you did this for work, or I remember yes. why you were here, or I remember your dog, you know. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know, um, but yeah, I mean, I think visual is a thing, right? Like being a visual learner. Yes. So, like, that makes sense. But also, on the other note, it depends on if I'm sober or not. Like, sure. if, if I'm high, <laughs> I'm less likely to remember your dumb. name. <laughs> yeah. That's true, too. Yeah. That's the X factor. But, um, it is, no, you mentioned, uh, you know, caring in all these different areas yeah. and trying in all these different areas. And I yeah. heard a quote, um, not that long ago, but it's, it's one that I fucking, I think about all the time. Okay. Uh, the way you do every, the way you do something is the way you do everything. everything. Yeah. I love that shit. Love that. Yeah. I used to hate that quote. Right. I used to be like, that's fucking bullshit. Right. Like, you can like something and do well in that and decide that something else doesn't matter and like do bad in mm-hmm. that right but the truth is is that like if you let something slack off on this end the truth is you're probably slacking off on the other thing on the other end mm-hmm. more than you th- think you are you might be thinking you're doing your best but you're probably actually not right because you're just like limiting yourself by not caring by not going 100% yeah. Well, it trickles down. It d- it's like, oh, yeah. you know, because again, and plus you decide the things that you do. Yes. So like if you work a job and you don't like it, you're still deciding that you're there. Yes. So you might as well do it the right fucking way. The right way. Yes. Like I remember when I was in, uh, you know, when you're in high school, you do the standardized tests yeah. over here. It's kneecap. I don't know if. Yeah. We did the, the same, same thing was, in Vermont. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, I was. Yeah. Yeah, I might have been in Massachusetts at oh, that okay. age. I can't remember. But yeah, it's all the... But yes, we, I'm pretty sure we did kneecap. Right. So <clears throat> we all knew that that shit didn't affect whether we got onto the next grade or it didn't affect any of our actual grades. Yes. It was more of like a school-wide baseline test. Yep. But um, 
I, I, my teachers would say the same thing. It's like, oh, this doesn't really matter. Try your best, but it, it's not a huge deal. Yeah. But in my mind, it's like, I mean, I'm, I'm signing my name on this thing. I yeah. kind of still want to do good. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know? No, and I think it, it's like, and it's exactly what you're just saying there. It's like, it's a mindset. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you just want to do good in everything you do, and that doesn't mean you're going to be the best at what you're doing like comparative to other people, but you're doing the best you can at whatever it is. Sure. You know what I mean? And like, you know, pursuing and following all the way to the end, like that's, that's how like good things are created. That's how good things come to be. That's Mm -hmm. how, yeah. It's also realizing, you know, if you're doing something and you're kind of beating a dead horse, like you're doing it just to do it. Yes. Like you could probably eliminate that and add that energy to the other shit that you, you know, Exactly. Care more about, I guess. Have you um, ever heard of Jim Quick? I've not. So he's uh, he. I found out about him because of this book called Limitless, and it's essentially a book that teaches you how to learn things. Yeah. Like how your brain works, like how you learn things, different ways to learn things, um, how to like read faster. Uh, you know, talking about distractions and the infinite amount of information, how to filter through, it and all this stuff. But I follow him on Instagram and he posted a thing the other day. He, he creates a not to do list. Mm. So things like not to do so that they don't get in the way of what is like truly important or what you really need to get done. Sure. So it's kind of like what you were talking about. Yeah. Siphoning shit out. Yeah. So it's like, these are the things I need to not do because essentially like they don't matter or I need to delegate them or like whatever, because like, this is my focus. This is what I, I need to do, you know, for whatever reason that may be. Right, right, right. And I'm realizing more and more it's, and I'm sure a lot of people realize it this way. It's an everyday thing. It is like very much so. That's why that I just hung that up like a week ago. Calendar? The calendar. Yeah. Because I'm a big advocate of the planner, but if yep. I don't look in the planner, then what the fuck's the use? Yes. So in my mind, it's like, okay, let's go to the planner, then we'll go up to the board. So now I see it every goddamn day. Yeah. We are creatures of habit. Yes. For sure. Like, uh, whether it be a healthy or unhealthy habit, like, we are creatures of habit. Right. So if we can do something every day, if we can do something often enough that it becomes a habit we will continue to do it. Right. So like that, and that's probably like the hardest part, right? Like just getting started going to the gym. Yes. Just getting started planning, just getting started meditating, like whatever it may be. Like that's the hard part. But once it becomes like a part of your routine. Snowball effect. Snowball effect. It becomes so much easier to do. And then that habit actually makes your life easier. Yes. Because you're, you're not worrying about it. Yes. Versus other habits that sometimes don't make our life easier. <laughs> sure. Talking yourself out of doing the shit that you're supposed to do. Yes. If there was, like, the amount of things that I would have gotten done, yes. if I, and the amount of time I would have had. Yes. Like, think about all the time that you've spent in your life just talking yourself out of doing something. Or overthinking something. Exactly. Essentially, like, wasted energy. Yeah. Wasted thought. Unnecessary anxiety. Sure. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard to break that shit, especially where you come from, you know? Dude, it's, yeah. it's the hard... I, I mean, for me, that's the hardest. I mean, I think that's always been my biggest struggle is like the, in, the internal battle. Sure. You know what I mean? Um, not getting in my own way. Right. Um, not like self-sabotaging or like limiting belief. Yes. You know? Uh, that's a huge one. Oh, limiting yeah. Limiting belief. It, Be, because we all come from certain places. Yes. So it's like, all right, I come from middle class working people. They want me to do a certain thing. I don't want to do it. Yeah. Like, you know, like I, we all get wrapped up in the idea of how we should live a life. Yes. But think about how many crazy lives people have lived. Yes. I always think of Hunter S. Thompson. Okay. Hell yeah. With it. Like that guy's yeah. a sicko. Sicko, yeah. <laughs> but he had a, a life. Like, he lived a life, made money, did all the shit that you do at your job. Yeah. And he did that same thing. The yes. way that he wanted. The way that he wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah he was a sicko. Um, <laughs> probably, like, you know, borderline did some unhealthy things, for no, sure. No, but like, But, like, got... I mean, but also, like... I mean, my thing I always say is, like, if you're not hurting anyone, like, who am I to judge? Like, exactly. live your life. Like, whatever makes you happy, whatever you know, helps you feel fulfilled, whatever gives you purpose, Right. you know? Uh, but 
yeah, it's like we get put into these boxes and we're, there's like something that's expected of us. And, uh, you know, even now, like I'll talk to some of my friends from back home and not that I came from like a super bad area by any means, but like, I also didn't come from a ton sure. by any means. You know, I lived in a trailer park, uh, great family though. Uh, everything's good. But like, I got friends that are at home that are like so happy for me and they're like, man, like you've really made it. Like you've broken out of, you know, a town and you've, you've made something good for yourself and it doesn't happen all the time with people from here. So it's like, it's something really special, which is true. And I really appreciate it. Um, but like I could stop here, Mm. right? I have one gym. It's successful. It's doing well. Uh, it survived through COVID and is on the way back. Uh, you know, I got a couple great employees and I could stay right here and I could be comfortable and I could, you know, maybe grow the gym a little bit more, but it'll probably never grow too much more than like 200 members yeah. realistically. Um, and right now we're at like 160. So, or I could do something scary, try to level up, Fuck yeah. open another gym and then sometimes life happens and another gym's for sale. Yeah. <laughs> and it might look like a good buy. So, you know, if I'm going to bite something, I might as well take a big bite. Yeah. See what happens. Exactly. Uh, if you're standing on ice, you might as well dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, so it's like you, and there's parts of me now where like, I'm scared as shit. You know what I mean? And like, I totally. could, use, I could use that to limit myself and be like, no, you know? And now on the other side, like obviously have to be smart you know, make smart decisions, calculated risks. Right. Right. Um, but like, you can't let those things stop you. Well, being nervous and being scared is what you're fucking supposed to be. Yeah. Like the second, uh, kickboxing match I ever had. Yeah. I, uh, I didn't allow myself to be nervous. I didn't allow, I just completely repressed every feeling of being nervous or scared or any of that shit, and yeah. I lost. Yeah. I lost because I psyched myself out before. You're not nervous. You're not nervous. You're fine. You trained. Yeah. When in reality, I was nervous because <laughs> two weeks out, I got an injury. I couldn't train oh, for a certain period of time. Okay. Couldn't, couldn't, yeah. You know, so that shit crept into my I'm mind, but I, I wouldn't allow it to, um, I wouldn't allow myself to feel it, if yes. that makes sense, which I found was because the next fight I had was on 30 minutes notice, and I wasn't nervous at all. I was fine. Yeah. I'm like, cool, and I won. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's literally, it's to, it's all in your head. It's, it's crazy. It is all in your head. Yeah. You know, the, that internal battle, the self-talk, you know, all those things add up, you know, going back to habits, you know, saying bad things to yourself is a habit. Yes. Saying you can't do something, just saying I can't like I try to always be very understanding and empathetic, but like, it's actually one of my pet peeves. Like if I'm like working with someone, coaching them or whatever, and there's like, all right, I can't do that. Obviously I would never ask something completely unrealistic from somebody. Sure. You know what I mean? I'm not asking to squat, squat, someone to squat like 500 pounds. I've I've only ever seen squat a hundred, you know, like I'm not going to do something wild. Exactly. So for like them to just be like, I can't before like ever even like trying a little bit, I'm like, come on. Yeah. Cool. You got, you got, you got it. Like it, you, you can, you yeah. can. And if you can't right now, that's okay. You know, but like, you got to try. Sure. But even now the thing is, is like, even in that situation, you can be like you were saying, understand you can be sympathetic and that type of thing. It's when people in like real life. Yeah. Like grown ass people who don't eat broccoli. <laughs> yeah, I, was, <laughs> like, I was literally, I don't know if we just like had to levitate. I'm like looking in your eye. I'm yeah. like, are you going to say vegetables? Cause dude, when people tell me that they don't eat vegetables, I'm like, are you fucking six? Yeah. I know. Well, you not like them. I mean, yeah. nobody loves them. Uh, yeah. I'm not like <laughs> some mm, people do. But broccoli. Actually, I won't lie. I make some pretty dang broccoli uh, okay. and some pretty dang cauliflower. How, the, is it a special the, way you do the it? The key is to roast it. Mm. so roast it with olive oil you know garlic pepper salt yeah. a little oregano mm-hmm. um but what you want to do especially with like cauliflower is you roast it till like the edges start getting like golden brown start yeah. getting like a little crispy that sounds pretty good it actually is really good i usually do a little uh like i'll start them in the pan i'll saute them yep with like olive oil like you said different spices whatever but i'll throw a little water and i'll steam them yes and i'll cover them yep shit comes out nice because then there's like a little bit of like a sauce Soft. 
Yeah. And it's soft, but there's yeah. also like a sauce. Oh, it's nice. Yeah, okay. Make like a sauce. little spicy. Yeah, I'm all about the sauce. <laughs> I'm all about the sauce. Portuguese people, for whatever reason, their whole cuisine is sauce. Like they love. It's because they know. Yeah, they do. They, it's they, they live do. forever. I don't know if you know any Portuguese no. people. Uh, I mean, I know like some, but like there's nothing that like comes up to everyone. Like, wow, that guy's been around <laughs> forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I mean, I'm half Portuguese uh-huh. and uh, they all make it to like 80 plus. Damn. All of them, dude. And and all they do is work mad hard. Work mad hard. Drink wine. Yep. Smoke cigs. And yeah. eat like, and eat sauce. That's and it. <laughs> it sounds like a pretty good life. Yeah, you know? it's not bad. I, I would, I'd feel pretty happy going yeah. through life. Um, you know, Maybe it's uh, maybe it's the genetics. Maybe it's also the fact that they probably just feel happy and fulfilled. It could be, yeah. You that's know, the thing too, because you see, it's funny that you bring that up because you're obviously a healthy guy. I try to be a healthy guy. Yeah, but then you see people who are like they're pretty old. Yep, they made it a pretty long time. Yeah, doing whatever they wanted. They never yes. cared about health. Yeah. So there is something to be said, like that person enjoyed themselves. Maybe that is what brought them to the older ages. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely something to say about being happy. Yeah. Uh, There is definitely something also to be said about what you believe. Sure. And, And both of those things, I would say, directly correlate to like how healthy you are. Yeah. So, you know... We could chalk up the, you know, grandma that lives to 90 who smokes cigarettes every day. We can probably chalk some of that up to luck. Sure. <laughs> right? No, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but some of it also could be the fact that she was happy. Yeah. Right? It brought her happiness. She was content. And she didn't believe that it was hurting her. Right. And it's funny because you'd think that, like, just because they don't believe, like, that should, like, I could say I don't believe in... You know, stomach cancer. Yeah. And people get it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, or you could end up with it or some shit. Yeah, you know? no. Um, but it, no, you're right. It's very true. It is. Yeah. No, uh, I can't remember what the name of the book is right now. I don't know why. Um, <clears throat> but essentially, it's a book. It's by a, um, like a neurological by... Some smart motherfucker. Some smart motherfucker. (laughs) Doctor of some sorts. Genes, DNA, that type of shit. Right. Um, And he pretty much talks about how, like, your beliefs affect you. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, And essentially, you know, you can believe things into truth, right? You can take the people that make themselves sick. I can't remember what that... Bulimia? uh, no, uh, well, no, no, oh, not that. <laughs> but that is one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean people that are like, oh no, I have a cold, and they will oh, like literally uh, hypochondriac. Yes, hypochondriac. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they will literally convince themselves that they have a cold. Yeah. And then they will get one. Very true. Right. That you get happen. people that get the placebo effect on a drug, mm. but are convinced that the drug they're getting is the drug, and therefore should heal them, and therefore their body heals. Sure. But they were only taking placebo. Yeah. So there is something to say about that. And essentially what this guy talks about is that our body is vibrations, like down to the cellular level, down to atoms, like atoms vibrate. It's what they do. Um, Sorry, I don't know. I was going off on a tangent for a moment. (laughs) But but those vibrations, right, uh, are directly tied to like thoughts and beliefs and things like this. Mm. And that like your, and like your, so your thoughts, right, your beliefs can become your reality. Right, right, right. In a, to a certain extent. Right? Well, that's, that's like, we started this conversation with stoicism. Yes. It's like, that's the basis of philosophy. Yes. However you think this life is, you can live it that way. Yeah. You know? Which is like really wild to think about. Right? Sure. Because there's so many different ways. There's <laughs> so many different ways. And you're just like sitting there and you're like, I essentially could make this whatever I want to. Yeah. I just have to make decisions and actions that coincide with what I want mm. and who I want to be. Right. Which is way easier said than done. Yeah, because who, who the fuck knows who they <laughs> yeah. want to be sometimes, you know? Yeah. That and just like, generally speaking, those conversations, those things are never easy. Oh, yeah. 100%. So. And a lot of those conversations with yourself, the one that you should be having. Yeah. Like, that's when the weed comes in. You're like, ah, the video games. Yes. You know, like I'll... Oh, yeah. And the only reason I cut it off was because I had... The only reason you make any change is because you have that conversation with yourself. Yes. Like, that's, you know. But I wanted to uh, bring up 
a book that I read a little okay. while ago. Um, since we're talking kind of in the same philosophy vein. Yes. Here. Uh, have you ever read any Albert Camus? No. So his, his philosophy, and mm-hmm. it's one that I've kind of, uh, I guess, more or less adopted um, through reading. I mean, I read three of his books, like oh, wow. kind of back to back. And I was like, so you this, liked it? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, but his whole philosophy is this life is absurd. Like everything we do is, is a, like, it's just strange. It's weird. Like right now, if, if I told you that there was a faraway planet where people get in these big metal things that, uh, you know, m- propel them around and they go into these big monstrous structures with glass, made of glass and stone, and they sit there for a long time and stare at a screen and leave. Like, you'd be like, what is this, alien? Like, this is, sounds like aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what we do. Yes. And he compares life uh, and, and the living process as, um, it was a, it was a Greek myth. I don't remember the guy, the, the character's name, mm-hmm. but his job in this life was to push a monstrous boulder up a hill. Oh yeah. Um, per, uh, Pacific, Pacific I, I know who you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. And then it rolls down. Yep. That's his whole job for eternity, but he does it in a way like he understands. He's like, this is fucking stupid. Why? Do I have to do this? Yes. But he understands that that's, this is what it is. Yes. So do it with a smile. Do it with a fucking positive attitude, more yeah. or less. So it's a very, like, it's a strange philosophy because off rip, it sounds kind of negative. Like, this is, we're here, this is meaningless, this is nothing. Yeah. But then it kind of reconciles itself and says, understand that it's kind of weird and nothing. Yeah. Make it your own. Do it, do it whichever way you fucking want. Yeah. 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 I think, I think my challenge with that would be that like saying that I think it is absurd for sure, but I don't know if I would say it's nothing. Sure. You know, um, there's definitely something, I don't know what that is, right? But there is definitely some sort of purpose. There's some sort of fulfillment. There's some sort of cohesive bond that's supposed to happen between people. Uh, I mean, there's a reason why we're happier together. There's Mm -hmm. a reason why we're happier outside. There's a reason we're happier when we help other people. Uh, there's a reason we're happier when we help ourselves. Yes. Uh, and so to say it's for nothing, I think it is more so to say that it's for whatever you want it to be. Yes. Like it's going to be it. absurd, but you can make it your absurdity. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, and a lot of his books... Um, the character is faced with some strange, absurd, like his most famous one is called The Stranger. Okay. And it's short. A lot yeah. of his books are short. But um, it's about a guy who, I read it a little while ago, but it's about a guy who ends up killing somebody. Oh. But like, it, it was more like, all right, me and you are hanging out and you got a problem with these two guys. Yeah. And they're, you know, going to jump us. And he ended up, all right, this escalated, stabbed them both. Now he's on trial. He lived some normal fucking life. Yeah. And now he's faced with a complete absurd a, situation. Yes. And then it kind of shows like his brain process, his, his thoughts, his reaction to the whole thing. Yeah. And it's just, it's an interesting, interesting concept. That is an interesting concept. And, you know, you'd like to be like, oh man, like I'd be cool. Like yeah. I would make it work, you know, <laughs> like, like we, you know, you want to say that, but like you don't know and right. like being put in that situation and technically something similar esque could happen to any any of us at any time um but then it goes back to that stoicism where it's just like all you can do is essentially be true right and be honest right and do everything that you can do and then whatever happens happens whatever however it plays out and then you have to accept exactly that's the hardest part which you know, I would hope that if you did everything you did and you weren't at fault for something, you wouldn't get blamed. But unfortunately, as we know, that is not the case. Sure. sure. <laughs> so um, being able to find good in being wrongfully accused would be very challenging. Yeah, 100%. And he ends up getting executed. Spoiler alert. But. Oh, okay. <laughs> Even worse. Yeah. Trying to find that, uh, a good in that as well. Yeah. Um, but 
I guess you could say there's good in telling the story so that it yeah. doesn't happen to other people. Sure. It still doesn't do any good for him, though. <laughs> right, right. So, I, you know, greater good. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the theme of kind of his, his books. Like, there's another one a little more, um, I guess, a little more relatable. Yeah. Where he, uh, it talks about the life of a teacher. And this guy's a teacher out in, I think it takes place in, like, uh, kind of like the Arabic countries, Middle Eastern countries. Got it. And he um, he lives out kind of alone, mm-hmm. right? Pretty, actually really alone in his schoolhouse. He has so many students. They leave. He lives a modest life, does his thing. And then one day, his, his, uh, his region is in a war with the region next to him. Got it. So one day, a guy, a bounty hunter more or less, brings a prisoner from the other region. Okay. And drops him off. He says, hey, my orders are to give you this guy. And to you have teacher? to the teacher. Okay. Because it's kind of like the midway point between the next town. Got it. Got it. Because they want him to, they want the teacher to bring him to the next town to get executed. Got it. And this guy is like, uh, he's now he's conflicted because he's like, all right, I don't care about like this. This guy never did anything to me. Yeah. But my country people, my people are against him and his people. Yes. So now he's faced with the dilemma. Do I bring him or do I let him go? Yeah. And that's kind of what... A lot of his books are, are like into the mind. It's a lot of introspection. I like that. It's so cool. Yeah. And, then, you know, I won't tell you what happens in case you read it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, in that situation, you get the, the scenario of, right, like what it is to be human, yeah. like with another human being, right? Sure. Versus what like one culture of human is with another culture of human or mm. one state is with another state or one country is with another country or one region is with another region. Right. I think it's like when you start to put people in groups, bad, exactly. <laughs> you start to take the human part out of it. Yes. Um, so then, so then, yeah. So it's like, that, that would be an awful situation to be, I'm sure it's like, I would probably be the person that would probably try to save him. Yeah. Uh, personally. But then it's like, what if you save him and he's, then he like is a soldier and comes back and like kills a bunch of your people. Exactly. Uh, it's like, what, so like, you know, it's a hard fucking thing. Yeah. Crazy dilemma. Crazy dilemma. Which is the whole, whole basis of his book. But you brought up, um, you know, being human and, and being in this worldwide community, if you want to call yeah. it that. I spoke to, on the podcast, uh, a professor, Professor Gonzalez from um, URI. Okay. And he's an indigenous people's history professor, more or less. That's awesome. So he was talking, we spoke a lot about how we're so far removed from the idea of a community. Yeah. Because the world is so big and, yeah. you know, we like to think because we have Facebook, we're a big community, 4 billion people are on it. Nobody, you know, it's, no. it's not, it's not the, it's not the same thing at all. It's, like not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. <laughs> so he talks about how more, most of human history, we traveled in tribes, we traveled in small communities. Yeah. Like we lived for each other. We lived not for abundance, but just for, to make it to the next day, make sure everyone in our tribe is good. Yep. And we move on. Yes. Where this individualistic approach, which has come more recently in modern times because there's money and there's yeah. fame and all these different things that allure us. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, it was just interesting to hear about that because I had never even thought about that. Yeah. Are you, are you from Providence? Yes. Okay. Uh, have you ever like experienced like small, small town? Like, oh, totally. I live, I mean... I grew up in North Providence, which is okay. right up the road, and it's, it is the small town. Okay. Yeah. So think even smaller, though. Right, right, right. Right? So, like, think how many people you know in Providence, in North Providence. Yeah. Right? Now, like, make that even smaller. So, I, I, it's so funny. I used to say this all the time. Like, the more you put people together, the more, like, desensitized they become. Sure. Right? So you look at like big cities like New York or Boston. Everyone's like, oh, those people are assholes. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're dealing with so many fucking people. people. Yeah. Because <laughs> they see so many people every yeah. single day. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. Yeah. I'm going to see another exactly. one of you in five minutes exactly. and fuck him too. <laughs> exactly. I have, I, uh, uh, you know, 
I just kind of revealed this on the podcast a little while ago, but I'm I'm back doing stand up comedy again. Oh yes, that's awesome, man! I, I didn't I, know you did it before. A while ago. Well, okay, so it was like four years ago. Hell I yeah! Because I was a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't limit yourself, <laughs> right. bro. That's exactly Don't it. Don't limit yourself. Higher thinking, goddamn. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I have I had a bit that I was working on on how homeless people like it's so easy to ignore them. Yes. Like immediately you ignore them. You don't even think about it sometimes. Yes. Like, especially in a populated place. Yes. So again, it's just another element of taking away, you know, human yeah. conditions and human experiences. And yeah. Shit. Well then you, cause then you don't have, what ends up happening is you get like, uh, surface level connections, you know, maybe it's based on your job. Maybe it's based on what things you like to do. Um, but like you get some of these surface level connections and you can bop around. You don't have to be tied or held accountable to one. So if you sleep with someone or talk shit behind someone's back or like whatever, like it's no big deal. Technically you could go find another one. So it just creates this opportunity, um, to not like to uh, opportunity to be inhuman uh, and not be held accountable. I'll never forget when I was growing up, my dad always used to say, he said, locks only keep honest people honest. Mm. Right? Because a thief will find his way in. Because a thief will find his way in. Yeah. And I think like the same thing kind of pertains with humans in that sense. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I do. So, um, yeah. I had to think about the same thing. (laughs) Is it? Or is it backwards? Yeah. (laughs) Does it make sense? Yeah, I think so, right? If you if you're wh- hold on now. How how are we trying to how, how are we trying to make how are we trying to make this metaphor work? Okay, so we were saying that okay, so being inhumane and kind of like uh, you know, these surface level relationships because when we were talking about the tribe, when you're in a tribe, you know everything, ins oh, and outs people, of everybody. People to hold you accountable. Sure. Those are the locks. Gotcha. Right? That keeps honest people honest. Right. When there's no locks, then honest people can just go, they become dishonest. Dishonest, right. They have the opportunity to, yes. right? But like, dishonest people, regardless of accountability, they're going to be fucking dicks. Exactly. Boom. Exactly. That's See, the connection. we worked this out. Hell yeah, dude. God damn right. I'm fucking Boom, too we're far. too far away. Too far. <laughs> I got wires, I'll unplug something. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't want to <laughs> hit anything. Um, but yeah, so like that's... So it's like, you know, I'm from, you know, smaller town Vermont. Everyone knows anything. You do something wrong, the whole town knows about it. You know sure. what I mean? It's like being a famous person. Yes. In your little town. And then you're scrutinized for whatever. Maybe you can't get a job because of it. Da, da, da. Like you get a DUI in Providence. No one would ever know. Right. Because probably like a hundred of them every weekend. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's the you thing. know, so like no one would ever know. It's, it's not in a newspaper. They don't have a list of all of them. Like they have that at back home. Sure. Everybody knows everybody. So you're held accountable. Yeah. And so That's... then, so then you have to interact with these people. You have to be a decent human being. You have to, you run into them more often. So whether you like it or not, you become more connected to them. Yeah. Because they know they know some shit. Like they, know, they already know about you. Yeah, they know you. They probably know your mom and dad. They know your sister. They're going to ask you, yeah. how'd that DUI go? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Are you all right now? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, I am very much ready to get to a bigger place. Bigger city? Bigger city. Interesting. Uh, um, I Why don't... I just... I don't know. I don't love the idea of being in I wouldn't mind going to a different small town maybe yeah but being in my small town like North Providence is very similar to what you were saying got it um everybody's the same you date one girl from there you've dated them all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> everybody's okay. Italian regardless of your nationality <laughs> like everyone <laughs> loves meatball sandwiches and talks like I do <laughs> even if you're you know the first generation you know like I mean? Pakistani child yeah. you know what I'm saying like, a white Irish boy <laughs> yeah exactly like my buddy James I was with him last night he's half Italian but he doesn't look at it at all really but he tries he tries <laughs> like he slicks his hair back he wears yeah. the chains oh yeah I'm like he's... lost me at chains dog yeah <laughs> I, I might slick my hair but. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing i don't know i uh plus i mean i've always i've been in love with uh i like big cities i guess but i really yeah. do love new york city got it new york city's dope to me i've actually never been really yeah holy fuck yeah it's not wild <laughs> what the fuck you know, four hours away remember earlier when i said sometimes i'm a homebody yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
But then, like, you know, I'll travel. Like, I've I've been, like, a decent bit of places. Like, yeah, I've been yeah, to yeah. Panama, you know, Mexico, then with the family. I've been to Ireland. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Was, yeah, that was yeah, pretty yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, I actually had a trip for Italy, like, right before COVID, but then COVID, so that didn't happen. Would have been pretty cheap if you went <laughs> during yeah. COVID. <laughs> yeah, but I, my trip was long was almost two weeks so I could have got there quarantined for two weeks and then came back it would have been great right. yeah that would have been dope <laughs> yeah on the Amalfi Coast <laughs> yeah shit. yeah um, that th- that was a second trip I had planned actually but that one was going to be a tour yeah um, but you know I got travel around try to see some stuff but yeah sometimes I like just chilling dude right but yeah New York New that, York that's your spot that's my that's the next place I'm trying to get to yeah I think I think New York's just a little too big for me sure personally um, it's fast it is it is fast <laughs> which is nice um, I am a fast individual, that's for sure. Right. There's lots of times where I'm like, these slow people. Oh my god. Just in general. I'm Dude, like, how how am I here with all of you? It happens to me in the restaurant all the time. Yeah. Because I work in the front of house at a restaurant on Federal oh. Hill. Yeah. So I'm pew, pew, all over the fucking place. Yeah. As we all are. Yes. And then you get a family of six that are loving yeah. the fact that wow, look at this oh, and yeah. whoa, and I'm like, get just move like yeah. get the fuck out of my way yeah or other employees yeah you know? that too I mean to go off of what you were kind of talking about earlier the Portuguese work ethic is yeah. a very real thing <laughs> yes it's exactly. a very real thing um, so that's part of it too you well know? when you're immigrant when you're uh, immigrant immigrants children yes you gotta work like a motherfucker yeah like both my parents came from their countries but yeah, then so, you definitely do. Yeah, you definitely cool. do. Um, yeah, I'm de- I'm definitely a couple generations, um, but my dad was just construction worker. Sure. So that's Which where is I, not easy at all. Yeah, so that's just where I got it from. Right, right, right. He's like, yeah, you're coming to work with me for five dollars an hour. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> hey, it teaches you something. <laughs> it taught me a lot. Yeah, it taught me a lot. You know, hey, locks only keep honest people honest. Goddamn right. My dad told me that. So. <laughs> You say get to work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the gym, we're an hour in. We haven't talked about your fucking new gym yet. Oh, yeah. Is it also going to be a CrossFit Providence or CrossFit? No. Um, so new gym is Rise Strength. Okay. It's opening right next door to CrossFit Providence. So there's two hangers. The second hangar we are taking over. Uh, oh, that was like a cheerleading yep. spot, right? Yeah, 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 which has been a whole debacle. Talk about challenging conversations. Sure. Ask them to leave. Like three or four months ago. I asked him to leave six months ago. Okay, you need to leave in three months. Sure. Been dragging out. Had to get an eviction notice. All this stuff. All of a sudden, he gets a place at the last minute. Cancel the eviction notice. Just like... And I'm mean, like, I'm, I'm a nice guy. Like, I don't want to evict anybody. But the right, dude right, wasn't right. leaving. So it's like... Uh, but yeah, so new gym should be opening like beginning of December. Oh, dope. Yeah. Um, oh, so that's pretty soon. Yeah. yeah. We, we've been waiting a while. We've right. been We've been ready to go. Um, I feel like I feel like we've spoken about this before. Yeah, I think in passing. Right, 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 right. Yeah, um, but it's with Henry Lau. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So John talks about him all the time. All the time. Yep. Yeah. 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 So Henry's a great guy. Uh, it's it's not very often that I work with someone and I'm like, you are impressive. Sure. And Henry is impressive. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I like working with Henry. It's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because those um, those people level you up too. Yes. Because you got to meet to what he's doing. Exactly. Yeah. Got to be held accountable. Yeah. Right. You know, surround yourself with people who get shit done, and next thing you know, you'll find yourself getting shit done. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you get left in the dust. It makes it makes the battle easier. It because does. If, if you're with someone who is, you know, lacking, sure, you could fight against that and say, ah, I'm, you know. Then it's like two battles. Exactly. Rather just team up. Yeah. Get it done. Exactly. Um, so that should be open. And then uh, strength-oriented mm-hmm. gym. A uh, couple, like, cardio machines, like bikes, rowers, eventually some treadmills. Yeah. Um, but mostly just, like, strength equipment and then, you know, some, uh, some like, lifting machines, like, guided machines, like, pulley systems nice. and, you know, like, your hack squat or pendulum squat, some, some stuff like that. Like, your generic gym stuff. Sure. Um, will, so, it, will it be, like, a, like, similar to, like, a commercial model? Like, can people be members and yep. they can just key card come in? You got it. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. That'd be dope. Yeah, so just monthly, come whenever you want. Uh, probably open from like five in the morning until nine at night. Right, like right, that. right. Key card in, good to go. Have fun, get after it. That's cool. And then we'll rent out to a couple personal trainers. So I know like John Amore and I believe Ashley are going to be in there. Sure. Obviously Henry will be in there, and I'll just be bopping back and forth between that gym and my gym. Right. And what's cool about that is you can have, you know, somebody who is trying to get in shape 
Yes. And they can go to that gym. Yes. And then if they really get into it and they peek in, oh, what are they doing over there? Yeah. Now that's the in for them to come check out the other side of it, yeah. the CrossFit part. And either way, it ends up being beneficial because I have my hand in both pies. Right. right? So it ends up being a nice um, synergistic sure. type, type of move there. And then the, uh, what was the other thing uh, with the new gym? I think, oh, the thing is, like, most strength gyms are, like, pretty, uh, pretty, like, bro Sure. You know, like, like, whoa, type of stuff. <laughs> Black Sabbath on repeat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which I'm fine with, like, a little sure. Sabbath once in a while, you know. Yeah. I'm, you know I'm not going to hate on that. Uh, some ACDC, you know, I'm, I'm all about it once right. in a while. But uh, we want to make a strength gym that's, like, more inclusive. Where, like, okay. any and everyone can feel welcome. You know, obviously, people working hard. But just, like, not... Not as like um, inclusive. Yeah, just not as like ego driven. Essentially, sure. you know, um, more like health and wellness oriented, more inclusive. You know, stuff like that. So right. Yeah, no, that's an interesting thing because it uh, the only options people have are classes like CrossFit group uh, group classes mm-hmm. or a commercial gym where they get more or less no help. Mm-hmm. So now it, this is like a nice middle ground where yeah. it's a strength gym. There's some, you know, uh, like you mentioned, pulley systems and cardio stuff. Yeah. But, you know, it, it has, it's from what you're telling me, it sounds like it's going to have like the perfect middle ground vibe. Yes. For, you can have like an animal in there lifting weights, but you can also have a mom right yes. next to him. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, Henry has been working at Top Strength, so that helps. You know, he's been working at another gym. He know he's been seeing the ins and outs. So sure. that's always helpful to have someone that's been seeing that and uh, learning what to do and what not to do. Right, right, right. Um, And so that's been really helpful, too, for for this opening. So we're excited. Now, what's the third gym? So the third gym is, like, (laughs) very, like, brand spanking new, hot off the press. Right. I, um, there's a gym for sale in Pawtucket, right on the line, Providence, Pawtucket line. Next to LA Fitness? Uh, ish. It used to be gold. No, no, oh, okay, not that okay. one. Uh, sure. It's called Industrial Revolution. It's right off like Exit 25. Okay. Uh, so, quick backstory. Industrial Revolution, owned by Kelly and her wife, Donna. Kelly used to be a coach at CrossFit Providence back in the day. Mm-hmm. She left, took like 80 members with her, opened her own gym. Now, she's gotten a little bit older, wants to retire, so she's selling it. She's got a pretty good deal on it. So I'm going to meet with her tomorrow and I'm going to go over the numbers, look at stuff and essentially see if it's viable, mm. what it's losing for money. It, it might be breaking even right now. It definitely isn't making money. Sure. Um, but just essentially go see if it's viable. And if it works out, I might purchase it. Mm. And if it doesn't, then I, then I won't. But yeah. it's, um, it's an opportunity. Right. That's so you at least got to go look. Right, right, right. You know? All we're given is an opportunity. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, again, like back to earlier, it's like those limiting beliefs. Like when things just... You can't own three gyms. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Right? Right? Seriously. You know? Uh, You know, a little, little, you know, white boy from uh, Vermont from a trailer park. Right. Came here, went to school for accounting. Yeah. You know? Then bought (laughs) bought a gym with the help of people and... uh, and then, like, you know, opportunity for another one. Right. Uh, was bad at reading and writing and all that stuff when I was younger. Now, all I do is, is read and write. And, and I'm a far better communicator than I've ever been in my entire life. Sure. You know? And just, like, taking all that, like, all those limiting things and just, like, slowly breaking them down. Right. And just pushing through them. It's also deciding. Yeah. You know, do or don't. Like, yeah. it's no try. Like, do or don't. Yeah. I don't know if you're a Bukowski guy, but... That sounds so familiar. Charles Bukowski. The, yeah. uh, he was a poet. But okay. He, he used to write about a lot of very real things. Okay. Like he would talk about, you know, uh, he had a poem about his first time with a woman. Yeah. And it was <laughs> awful. Like, he thought, he had all these ideas of what it would be like. Oh, you said the sex was awful? Yeah. <laughs> well, the whole I thought experience. You were saying the po- I thought you were saying the poem was awful. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, t- he talks about the whole experience and how it was like, I had this image, I was going to be with a beautiful woman in a satin dress, and it yeah. turned out to be some 
you know, large haggard who laid on me and it was <laughs> disgusting. And he, and he talks about a lot of real shit and about a, like, about like, you know, how life sometimes you build it up yeah. and it disappoints. Yes. But putting pen to paper and having someone else read that, it's like, all right, this is some real shit. Like yes. this is, you know, but anyway, on his, uh, on his tombstone, this is something I've talked about on here on his tombstone. He had a quote that said, don't try. And it sounds negative. Yeah. Like, you know, don't the first the first inkling is like, wow, that's fucked up. Why'd he put that on his tombstone? Yeah. But when you look into it, because he had a whole poem as well, don't try. Got it. Just do. Just do. No, no, you know, trying. Yeah. Like um one time I was in a group chat with uh John Larkin was in it and a couple guys that we worked with, and we used to um we'd meet up sometimes uh-huh. and uh ride, like ride bikes and shit. Yeah. On the trail and whatever else. Like East Bay. East Bay yeah. and uh what's the other one? Fuck, the one in one socket in Cumberland. Blackstone. Got it. That's a nice one. Yeah, it is. Especially around this time with the foliage, foliage and shit. Yeah. But um one of the guys, he's like, Oh yeah, I'll I'll try. I'm gonna try and make it. And then you know, the other one is like well, when you wake up and you go to the gym and, and do arms for six hours, do you try or do you just go and do it? So you kind of don't want to come with us is basically what you're, what you're saying. saying. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, just yeah, say, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not coming. Yeah, Don't yeah, say yeah, I'm going to yeah. try. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. do or don't. And yeah. I love that shit. I love that shit too. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, it's, I mean, back to some of the earlier stuff we said, like things that, you know, are taking away. Right. Right. things you should be doing things you shouldn't be doing or things that you want to do versus things you don't want to do whatever it may be uh and then you know in this scenario like just saying you want to do something say do it like say you're going to do it and if you don't then don't unless you have to yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. um and then, like if you just you know like if it's not a hell yes it's a no yes right like don't beat around the bush don't get go off, half get off the fence just be <laughs> truthful like be yes. honest which is hard. It's it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. It's, I think it's the hardest. You want people to like you. Yeah. You want you have all these things. It's like... Yeah. You know. Yeah. And I... Back to like what we were talking about at the very beginning, right? Like the internal talk. But in the end, I think it's like... We want people to like us. But in the truth, all we ever really need to do is like ourselves. Yes. And then other people will probably like us because of that because we like ourselves we're true to ourselves doing what we like mm-hmm. other people that have similar values and thoughts and uh, hobbies will be around you yeah and Gravitates. if you are a happy person people will probably like that yeah right unless you're you know a mortician they like sad people they, <laughs> yeah. make, they make money off them <laughs> yeah that's true that's true that is true but no it's uh, I mean it's obviously it's um for lack of a better term, it's magnetic. Yes. If yeah. you're, you know, if you're miserable, misery loves company. You're going to have some miserable people. Around. Yeah. But it's the same if you're oh, dude, doing miserable. and you're acting, you know, miserable people get away from me. Right. I can't. Hard and, to deal and, with. And it's hard. And yeah. like, don't get me wrong. We all go through hard parts in our life. We all need to complain sometimes. Sure. But like, I'm, I'm, I can be pretty empathetic in that sense. And, but like, if you're just miserable all the time, bro. Yeah. Keep that over there. <laughs> it brings you down. It makes it, it hard does. to stay positive. And then you feel bad for being positive. Yes. Like, wait. I will say, though, some of my favorite comedians, some of my favorite humor are like some Dark. of the most negative shit. Yeah. <laughs> but that's because it's funny. Yes. It, you know what I mean? They're doing it for like a purpose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's, it's funny. Um, and, and I think it's also like, generally speaking, the... The funniest things are usually true. Yes. You know what I Biggest mean? Thing. And like things that people can connect with. Yeah. You know? So that's probably the other part is people, you know, probably can connect with that feeling yes. and have like felt it before and, and have known it to be true. So like, yeah, that's hilarious. Some of the best comedians are the ones who say something yeah. that everybody's thinking. Yeah. Whether it's controversial or not. Like George Carlin had a phenomenal bit where he talks about all these little things that humans do, all these, th- these weird little quips that we do. Yeah. And he's like, you ever go and make a sandwich? He's like, 
why do we skip the first six or seven slices of bread? <laughs> we got to get to the good bread in the middle. And yeah. everyone's like, I fucking do, do that. that. Totally. Yes. Yeah. Like, that shit's hilarious. It is hilarious. <laughs> I actually did that earlier today. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I was making like a, a bacon and egg sandwich mm. on some sourdough. And I went right for the middle pieces. The middle. That's you right. Know? So. Or, or he'll talk about like, uh, he had another huge bit. And I mean, he would do this often, but like things that we say. Yeah. Like that's greater than sliced bread. <laughs> And he's like, so this is it, huh? Yeah. <laughs> sliced it's bread. Like the greatest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> I yeah. I can't tell you how many times I've said that. Yeah. It's, yeah. 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 That's it. That's the one. That's the best thing we got. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He starts yeah. naming things. He's like the Great Wall of China. Yeah. He's like a fucking lava lamp is better than sliced bread. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. Best thing we got to compare to though, sliced bread. Yeah. The middle pieces specifically. <laughs> middle pieces specifically. No, that shit's great. Um. All that shit is human, though. I mean, we're all supposed to find the things that, you know, when you're with your buddies, you always clown the thing that one of your buddies does. Like, dude, yeah. why do you wear your hat like that all the time? Yeah. And yeah. everyone's like, dude, you do wear that fucking hat, hat like that. Time. Like, it's. Yeah, you, you can def. I mean, there's. It, dep- it like it all depends on relationships and how they are, you know? Mm-hmm. Some, some guys enjoy that, some guys don't, you know? And I think it's just like. You, you end up knowing because you've been with that person. Like you can give this person shit about this. Yes. You can't cross a line about that. And it's just like coming down to that human part where you're like, you know the person, mm. right? And so you can, you can do that thing. And, but like, then there's like, you know, like you may be able to say something to your buddy, but then like someone else random couldn't be able to say yes. that same thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and that's where it starts to get challenging around like saying things, mm. right? Like sometimes Actually, a lot of times you probably can't talk to everyone else the same way you may talk to your buddies or your friends because it's like maybe it's too honest or truthful or something like that, or maybe it's something bad that you shouldn't say. <laughs> um, but it's uh, it, it's all about that, like being able to speak though and communicate well. Yeah, and having that whatever your rhetoric is. Yes, I mean rhetoric is more of a something that comes into play when you're a leader. Yeah. Or you're a person that people look up to. Yeah. Um, and then you can kind of mold the people that are listening. Yes. Based on whatever you say. Yes. So like, you know, George Carlin can get away with a, uh, I don't know, an abortion joke or something. Yeah. But if I went on stage and said some crazy shit about an abortion, people would be like, oh, this guy's a fucking sicko. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that comes down to uh, almost like trust. Yeah. Which is like kind of weird, you know? It's like, why would someone trust someone random on stage regardless of their like status? Sure. You know what I mean? Um, But it's like having the trust in someone to know that like they're just making as a joke, it's not serious, you know, that they can be safe and like laugh. Uh, It it comes down to a trust thing. So like because you're not famous and people don't know that you're funny, even if you are funny, right, and just making a joke – they may not take it that way because they like don't trust you and don't know you. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. But they know, what was that comedian's name? George Carlin. They know George Carlton. Yeah. They know who, well, they, at least they think they know who yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they know his persona. At least. Exactly. They yeah. know his persona. They know what he does. Like they know his style. Right. Um, and therefore they trust in what he says more. Sure. They, they can, they can take it. They can stomach it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's great. Well, Hey, my man. We've gone for a little while. This yeah. is great. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Always um, a pleasure. Yeah, Always a totally. pleasure. Great. Thank you so much for coming on. Oh, yeah. one other thing I wanted to mention to you before we got this done. Yeah. Um, last time we spoke, I was I think I told you about Mount Mansfield and, okay. and how me and my girlfriend had tried doing it. Hiking it. But we were so like incredibly unprepared. Yes. We didn't realize how hard it would be. Yes. We went back a couple months ago and we fucking did it. Fuck yeah, dude. Bang. Boom. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's awesome. I've totally fell in love with hiking. I don't know yeah. what the fuck it is, but... Don't just try, dude, bro. It's so fun. Just, don't just try, dude. <laughs> Goddamn right. <laughs> just do. That's what we did. Yeah. We were we like, did. this is going to be hard, but fuck it. We're going to yeah. do it. Yeah. Got to do it, man. And That's if you it. fail, if you mess up, just turn around, fix it, and go back. Yeah, try and again. And if you fail and you don't actually want it, realize that and go do something else. Exactly. Fuck this mountain. Fuck that mountain. <laughs> I was trying to come up with a witty comment about Mansfield to turn it into something witty, but I couldn't think of anything. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> next time. Next time. Next time. Yeah, I'll have the joke for you next time. <laughs> uh, where can people find you, sir? Uh, T.Baldoff14 on Instagram. Mm-hmm. 
And that's about it. Okay. Yeah, I don't have any other social media. I'm barely on Facebook. Uh, oh, CrossFit Providence on Instagram as well. Okay. Rise Strength, soon to be. That'll be there soon. On Instagram. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I keep it simple. Where's the gym for people in Providence? Ah, uh, yeah, 425 Washington Street. There you go. Uh, that is where CrossFit Providence is, and that is where Rise will be as well. Right next door. Yeah, let's get it's it. Beautiful one stop shop. Get yoked. Yeah, Bay <laughs> Athletics facility in the end. That's the go. goal, right? Gotta have dreams. That's right. Dope. All right, guys. Thank you all so much for listening. Make sure you follow me. Uh, all the links are in the description. I'm the most important person in your life, so make sure you uh, you do that. And uh, and that's it, guys. Thanks for listening. Peace. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Other than your mom. <laughs>